bolt to go in. That is the... That's what in the world puts the pad and it should be used. The, um, let's take a little hi there and welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and yet again Sam is with us and she's asked me to show her a bit about electrics and we're going to play around with things like bulbs and meters and what else have we got we've got some relays to play around with all different kinds of relays we've got flasher relays we've got oh, I've even found an old injector out of the RAV4 I think it was out of. Um, yeah, there's just heaps of stuff. So we're going to just play around, make up some circuits and do stuff. Um, real simple, everything's 12 volts. So, um, okay, well let's give it a go. You ready? I think so. We're going to make some sparks? Yeah. Probably. No, my luck. It could be a fire, you never know. <laughs> right, okay, so let's start off with a really basic circuit because Sam, you don't know a lot about electrics, right? No. I remember like year nine class. Yeah, electrics. Yeah. I don't know, something to do with an LED light. An LED. Well, LEDs, they're very popular these days. Yeah. And uh, actually, I was watching one of Steve Robb's videos not so long ago about uh, LED reversing lights on his ute. And um, you know how they say they have like a 50,000 hour burn time? They last forever, these LED things. And um, in reality, they don't. Mm. There's a lot of cheap, nasty, yeah. rubbish LEDs out there that are coming out of um, you know, China and other similar countries that produce very low level mass products. Produce. Yeah, mass produced at very, very cheap cost as well. I mean, they're, they're, right. they're brilliant at making stuff cheaply, but the problem is it doesn't last, does it? Yeah. So um, I'm not a great fan of LED. I mean, I've got LEDs in, oh yeah, we used some when I made that, um, that logic probe a while ago. Remember the student's logic probe? There you go, look. So LEDs, yeah, they're okay and they're cheap to make. But uh, you know those rear light clusters on the cars nowadays, and the the halo lights on the front on the front headlights. Once two or three of those LEDs fail, and they're molded into the headlamp unit, you've got to buy a whole new headlight. You can't just put a couple of LEDs yeah, I've in it. I've seen those ones. They they look crazy. Actually, on my way here, I saw one yep. that lights on the front were like in a line. It was just like. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like the yeah, light was yeah. like. Oh, so like it kind of looked like it was going like that. Night Rider. Yeah. Kit. But it was just on the front Zoom. underneath the normal lights. Really? It was going off in daylight, so. That's oh, bizarre. I, I, yeah, they're just like, oh, it's a new gimmick. Buy yeah. one of those. Got to have it because the neighbor's got it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much the thing, isn't it? You know? Yeah, it's pretty But theirs has to be bigger than the neighbor's and have more lights and flash faster or whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah. But um, going back to the basics. A lot of people, you know, uh, have asked me, "Hey, Andy, you know, how do you how do you fit spotlights onto my car? Um, you know, do I just wire them into the headlight wires?" Well, no, you can't do that because those spotlights obviously are going to consume more power from the battery from the wiring harness, and the wiring on your car is only designed to run the headlights on the car. It's not designed to have additional current flow, running other stuff. And if you do, you, you risk the chance of burning out the wiring. Uh, your headlights might be dim as a result of it. Uh, you could damage some of the switch gear inside the car. All these things are going to cost you money. Um, what we have to do is use things like a relay. Uh, and a relay is really simple. And we're going to cover that. There, there is already a video that I did a while back on relays and how to wire them up and things. But I didn't really go into how to wire up a spotlight circuit. So we'll, we'll cover that in this video. And we'll... We've only got about an hour and a half left today uh, before Sam's got to scoot off and I've got other things to do as well. So we'll, we'll try and cover as much as we possibly can in the given time. And it may seem that we jump around a little bit, but the basic theme is just car 12 volt, simple lighting electrics using relays. Uh, and we'll chuck in there, you know, a, a flasher relay as well in one of the circuits so you can see that operating. Okay, so here we go. Let's start with the simplest of circuits. Uh, a light bulb and a power source, and let's get that light bulb lit up. Okay? Yep. Easy. Here we go. So, Sam, one halogen headlight bulb. All right. So it's going to when it when it gets 
lit up, it's going to get quite hot. So I've got to be careful with that. And because of that, I've got to use a couple of decent, um, a couple of decent test leads. These, these are really useful because you can just make up circuits really quick with a couple of clips on there. So we've got our power supply, and this uh, this basically represents a battery. But it's a much safer way of doing circuits on a bench yeah. than using a battery. So on the back, there look, really. On the back, we've got positive and negative. And we can actually adjust the voltage a little bit on this, but it's currently set to 12 volts. So we'll use the yellow wire as our positive. Yeah, it's not normal, we usually use a red one. But. And we'll use the white wire as our negative. Okay, so really simply, and we'll, we'll turn the power supply on uh, by the switch at the back. So we'll turn it off for now. So if you want to wire up the, the bulb, now this is a single filament bulb, so it only has two terminals. Rather, a normal headlight bulb would have three pins, and one, of, one pair of pins does dip B, and one does main B, mm -hmm. all right? And there's a common pin. Okay, so one of each of the clips onto each of those pins, but really important, don't let the clips touch once the power's on. Otherwise, we get sparks. All right. Yeah, nice oh, they are. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, I better move those around. So you can do it like that if you want. Oh, okay. Just we'll just put one on this side, and that way it's not going to touch. Okay. So hit the magic switch, and let's see if we get power. Where's the on button? <laughs> right at the back there. Look. This ah. is good. It's quite bright, isn't it? Yeah, it's very bright. Yeah, it's really bright. So you can turn it off again if you want. Okay. That's cool. Very good light. <laughs> Jeez, all I can oh. see. Now. Yeah, all I can see now are dots. Okay. <laughs> So we'll put that bulb to one side for now. That's actually quite a high wattage bulb. In actual fact, it is. We're going to be really, really, if I can read it, Jesus. It's 55 watt. So that's pretty much a standard size, old school car headlight bulb. Obviously, we were talking about LEDs before, and some cars have LED headlights now, which uh, the reason for it is they use a lot less power but give out more light, mm -hmm. more efficient bulb. Still a light one though. Okay, so now, Let's use a relay because that circuit we had there wasn't fused. So, you know, when I said to you, hey, look, you know, if we touch those together, it's going to make sparks. Can you see that? But it's safe because that's a, a power supply and it's got a circuit inside to protect it. If that had been a battery, we'd yeah. get huge sparks. And if we touch them together permanently, we'd have just melted all the wires. And the students are great, they have flames and all sorts going oh, wow. on when I was teaching them. So we'll turn that off for now, and let's use a relay. Now, I want to draw you a little circuit first of all. You choose a change of a relay, not that one. A normal relay. Not that one. Ah, there it is, look. Okay. So, we've got a normal relay here. There's, there's lots of different kinds of relays. And if I draw you a little picture, pictures are always good. Okay, so we'll just draw you a little picture. You see on there we've got four four pins, okay. Now, two of the pins are going to be either end of an internal coil like that. And when we pass a current through that coil of wire, it creates a magnetic field. And on the other side, we have a switch like that. So on this particular relay, when we put current through that winding, which is two of the pins, it then closes the switch and it connects that terminal to that terminal there. All right. So looking at the relay, we've got a little diagram. I'll just show that on the screen there, look. Got a little diagram on here. And that coil of wire is represented by that little square. And it's 85 and 86, the two terminals. So we can write that on, 85, and 86 and it doesn't matter which way the current flows it makes no difference like a light bulb it doesn't matter so once there's current flowing then we get the magnetic field and that's what triggers this switch now the remaining two there's your switch there look we've got 30 and 87 so we can put 30 on one of those and 87 on one of those I'll just turn it on so it's without down so you can see all that now in your orientation okay right so, our trigger circuit is 85 and 86, so uh, if your eyesight is better than mine, let's 
So on camera there, look. Eighty-seven. Yeah, I've put a little yellow. Five. So it's those two there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> if you want to put your crocodile clips, and you'll have to put them all sticking out sideways, you're going to come around here a little bit, and you're on camera. I'm going to clip those on either side, one on each side. Like I say, it doesn't matter on the polarity. We can have it. One can be negative, one can be positive. Makes no difference. Yeah, bring that. That will work. Yeah, you can do. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, as long as we're conscious of the rest of them. Okay. So we can actually test the relay right now. Mm -hmm. So if you turn your power on, if you at the same time hold that in your fingers, you should feel a little click inside. So use your use your right hand. Hold that. Turn your power off. Is it, is it off at the moment or on? Yeah, it's off. Okay. So turn it on. Did you yeah. feel it click inside? Turn it off. There you go. It takes us a few seconds for it to, to deep, yeah, deep yeah. power down, does that thing? Okay, so we know that there's a click going on the relay, so we know we're on the right two pins. So when that's when that relay is actuated, all it does is connect this pin to this pin. And one of these pins is 30, which is that one there, and it connects it to 87. It's just a switch. That's all it is. It's not complicated. So what we can do now. I'm going to move this into the vise so we can actually hold the relay still, otherwise we might get shorts and stuff. So I'll set the camera up, we'll move the relay in the vise and then we'll carry on, okay? Right, side cutters. My little cheat label, I worked them all out this morning, which ones are which, just to save a bit of time today. Right, I'll get rid of that. Okay, so we'll leave those two wires on that you put on. I'm just going to turn that one around a bit like that. There we go. Move the power supply across. I'm going to mount that. Just in the vise, just so it doesn't move around, that's the important thing. No idea it shorts. Okay, so by turning the power on, that turns the relay on. And we can just check it by taking one of the wires off and just go like that. Yeah. So that relay has definitely been actuated. And at the moment, with this particular relay, while it's actuated, those two pins are connected. And we can prove that because we can get our multimeter and we can stick it on continuity test. Which is that one there? See the little like a um, speaker sign, mm -hmm. the noise sign. So we can move to noise. There we go. Continuity test. And when we get a circuit, when we get con uh, two things connecting, we get a beep. It's like that game operation. It's, it's exactly the same. We could use the <laughs> operation game to test this relay. Actually, ah. we could do that. <laughs> All right. So if I hold those on there. We've got continuity. That proves that that pin is connected to that pin. And if you take that crocodile clip off for me, no. Yep, it should stop. Um. Brilliant. Back on again. Oh. <laughs> Bloody good. All right. So we've proved that. So we know that, that relay is good. We can use it because I found that relay in the drawer. I don't know if it's good or not. To be honest. Well, now you know. Now I know. That's right. So what we need to do now is rig up a bulb. So I have a little bulb holder thing going on, it's got cobwebs on it. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, and it's only a little tiny bulb, so we don't need particularly thick wires like these, we can just use normal ones. And we said that the yellow wires pop... Oh, short circuit, short circuit, short circuit. Oh. Damn, Mr. Young. Okay, that's alright. Let's just move on and move it around. Luckily it's got protection, so we haven't blown it up. Right, so the yellow wire is our positive, is battery positive. Now we could go right back to the battery if we wanted to, but we can actually get positive from here. So we can run another another lead off there. There we go, all right, so we've got another positive supply. And basically, um, both of these two circuits would need to be fused. Now the trigger circuit, which is these two wires, uh, would only need to have a small fuse, and it'd be two and a half amp. Is about the smallest you can get. But the actual consumer circuit, which is these two pins here, this is what you'd wire your spotlights to. You've got to choose whatever fuse or whatever thickness wire is going to match the how much current is going to be drawn by that lamp. If you've got a really big spotlight, it's going to use lots and lots of current. Okay, so that can go on there. We've got a positive feed, so we can stick that onto 30. 30 stands normally for battery power in, and we've now got. The output. So here, this wire at the moment is live because the relay's energized. Okay, so if I put that onto there, onto one side of the bulb, just like you did with the headlight bulb, stick it on one of those. 
We'll get one more wire, one more test lead. I'm going to stick it on the other side of the, the bulb, down there, look. So now the bulb is in circuit. All we have to do is put this to ground, to battery negative, and the bulb should come on because the relay is still energized. So negative was the white wire. So if I put that on there, the bulb should, in theory, come on. Oh, shit, it's me fell off. Come back. I'm so scared to open a bar. No, don't be scared. <laughs> Hang on. We've, lost, we've lost a wire, so that's about, that was battery yeah. power in. Okay, so we'll stick that back on there. Yellow was powering. If you can get it on better, there we are, like that. Right, <laughs> okay. Good. And that's basically, white is battery negative, so put it on there and the bulb lights up. All right. All right. So we'll stick that on there like that, on that pin. And we could have that connected all the way back to the power supply. We could do that, let's do that, because it's actually less confusing. So we'll turn that around. We'll stick that one, which is the ground side on there, which is ground, that's battery negative. And we'll take this one, which is here. This is our positive feed. We'll stick it right on our battery right over there. And the same thing happens. No problems, easy. So if you turn the power supply off, obviously that should go off. Okay, put it back on again. And it comes on, but that doesn't prove anything because it would have gone out regardless of how we wired it up. If we can prove that we're breaking the trigger circuit, which is the circuit with the little winding in it, which would be, for example, that's the earth side of the trigger circuit, that's the positive side of the trigger circuit. You can break either of those and the relay turns off, doesn't it? Oh, but all the rest of the wires are still in place. Mm. Yeah? Pretty cool. So, I think we should just recover that again, just to be on the safe side. And I'll just move the camera a bit. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay, so we're just going to take all the wires off and do it, do it right from scratch again, just so you've got an idea of what's going on. All right? So we'll just disconnect absolutely everything, so there's nothing there, and Sam's going to wire everything up. On the spot, Sam. All right. We've got a heap of wires. So let's wire up the trigger circuit first. So the trigger circuit was these two, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right? So for the trigger circuit, we actually don't need to use thick wires because it's only, all it's doing is powering that little tiny coil inside. Mm. It's like a fraction of an amp. We can actually find out. So uh, we could use red for red. So there's your battery positive. I'm going to click that on there for us. Oh, you can put one down the inside. It's a hollow inside. Look, stick one down the inside. There you go. Yeah. More secure. It's not ideal, to be honest. And then you can, because it's a coil of wire, it can have current flow in either direction. So you can put it on this side or this side. Put it in a way that's not going to hopefully catch any other ones because the machine's getting upset with me now. There you go. Cool. I'll we'll bring it a bit closer. There. All right. And we can use, oh, we've got a black one there. Look, use the black as your ground. So that's going to go from that one there. Look, the other yellow tag, tagged pin. And one of those pins is 85 and one is 86 on a yeah. standard relay. To there? Yep, onto there. That's cool. And what we can do, yeah, let's stick it, stick it on like this, look, I'll show you. So it's on like that. Because that way it sort of grip it sort of grips a bit better. I'll do that one as well, look. And that way they're all sort of going away from each other and no chance of fire and sparks and things. Okay, so if you turn that on, it'll trigger the relay again. It'll actuate the relay. What we can do, because we've got all sorts of fun stuff here, we can actually see how many amps are flowing through those wires to power that relay. From just being next to it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that relay is using, let's, see, let's settle down, look, it's using 0.8 of an amp yeah. just to power the relay. So a two and a half amp fuse will be fine yeah, for the trigger circuit. Going to move around a little bit. The, the, this isn't that accurate at such a such a, yeah. such a low amperage. Yeah, I haven't got me other needle me at the moment. Right, so we've got about say an amp that's running that relay. The consumer circuit is these are the two pins. That's your spotlights. And I'll do a full diagram on the board at the end. All right. So now we need to create a consumer circuit. So we need. On pin 30, 
which is that one, isn't it? Yeah, God, I'm blind. All right, we're going to go from battery positive to pin 30. And this is the wire that you would put the fuse in. This has to be fused. All right, we don't need to use it because we're, we're rebels, but normally you would fuse it. So we'll stick one on there. Now, bear in mind, oh, we better turn it off for a second. All right, and that wants to go on 30. Can you stick that on there for us? Cool, okay. And let's use our really bright bulb, just for the hell of it. Because we like to be blinded, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got our bright bulb. So we can go from the output of the, cons the switched circuit yeah. in here, not the coil circuit, the switched circuit which is pin 87, we can go to one side of the bulb. All right, go and do that. And I'll find you one more big wire. There we go. Cool. So again, come in from the side, because it just, it just grips better. Like that, there you go. You got it. Because I'm not... Yeah, I saw that. I was like, Boom. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, we'll stick the bulb on there, look. So what we'll do is we'll have... That one can go on one of those, one of those pins. That will work. Uh, yeah, we'll do one, one like that. That'll work. That should be okay. Yeah, I can see flames. Right. <laughs> okay. And then the other side of the bulb can go back to the, back to battery negative, which is that pin there, isn't it? All right. So you're gonna stick that on there for us. You've got better fingers than I have this kind of stuff. I'm gonna hold the bulb. Okay. Okay, I'm working. All right. Already? <laughs> so the trigger circuit is this red and black, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So if you take the red one off no. and, just, and just yeah, and just hold it right, right close. Okay. So it's not actually touching yet. We'll turn it on, and the bulb's not on, is it? But if I touch it. But will. if you trigger the trigger circuit, flow of current. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So what's happening is when you trigger that, current flows through that little winding inside creates a magnetic field and it closes the big switch inside the relay and then we get current flow from the battery through the bulb. All right, now there's one more thing I want to do whilst we're blind. So if you energize that permanently, clip it on for us and we're going to be blind now and we're going to measure the current flow. Okay. Three. Yeah, forget the minus because it's just going on the wrong wire. That's all. But we've got f basically just over three amps of current flow mm. for that bulb. That oh, one, that one. Changing. Yeah, they get really hot. Oh, really, really hot. You can turn it off before it gets fine. <laughs> there we go. Holy shit. That, that's how they are, because the, basically what's burning off is we've been touching the bulb oh, yeah, and we have grease on our fingers. Yeah. And it's um, just natural you know, body grease and it actually just burns off and it can actually damage the bulb. It can cause the glass to crack. Mm. Um, so when you're fitting a new halogen headlight bulb in your car, you can't touch the glass. Okay, so what we've just done is wired up a standard four pin relay. Really, really simple. Now, we didn't put any fuses in the circuit. I'll draw a circuit diagram and I'll put the fuses in that. Mm -hmm. Once we've done that, we'll move on and we'll have a play around with a flasher relay, I think. Sweet. Now, if we had two bulbs, because most people fit two spotlights, don't they? Okay. Mm -hmm then we could get another bulb, two more wires. Well, in fact, I'll do it on the, do it on the diagram. That'll be easy, because otherwise we're going to have wires all over the place. Right, so we can disconnect all of this now. Hopefully things have cooled down a bit. Right, that should work. Turn the meter off. Okay, so we'll just chuck all that over there. Poor old vice. One day I'll fix it. <laughs> right. Get rid of the power supply. Okay, circuit diagram time. Have a bowl. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so what did we have, Sam? Well, we had basically a battery with a power supply and it had a positive and a negative and it was 12 volts, right? Okay. So this was our, um, our uh, winding circuit, our um, trigger circuit we call that. And we had 
a positive to one side and a negative to the other, don't we? And I can actually use, geez, I can even use coloured pens. I've actually got a red pen. Oh, wow. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come off the battery. She's definitely on the screen, just we'll come off the battery and we'll come down here. And we had a wire going onto there. All right, and that was the positive. And then we had the negative coming off here. But better draw some blobs for the terminals, I suppose. We had that coming off here and going up onto battery negative. And when we connected those two wires up, we had current flowing through there of about one amp. So we'd need a fuse in the circuit, really, to be fair. And you can draw a fuse. We always put fuses on the positive side. So we can draw a fuse on there, look. We can draw a fuse like that. And we can put on there a 2.5 amp fuse. Easy. Okay, that's the trigger circuit. This is the consumer circuit, the switched circuits. This, this one can cope with lots of amps. It can cope with the big spotlights and stuff. That's, that's why we're using the relay, essentially. So we need, we need a bulb. So we'll stick a bulb over here. Uh, actually down here looks somewhere and you can draw a bulb like that there's lots of different ways of drawing a bulb and one end of the bulb connected red pen to 87 like that okay the other end of the bulb we put down to ground or grounds over here so we can bring that along like this okay along like that and onto there and we had to give 30 a feed, didn't we? A battery feed, positive. So we can go again. Now you're going to go. How are you going to get there, Andy? Because you've, you've drawn lines everywhere. <laughs> well, on a circuit diagram, it's not, there's a, a cheat way of doing it. We can basically go like that. And when we come down, we can do a little bridge like that. Huh. Saying that it like skips. Yeah, you just sort of going over the top. If it's a, <laughs> if it's a straight line, it means using a straight line with a little blob. It means it's, it's a connection. Yeah. But that's the, when it's a little bridge, it's not. And then we can bring that across down here and go up onto there, look. Now, that's our feed for the bulb. So we should have a fuse in there as well. And we measured three amps on that one. So we use, the next size up fuse is a five amp fuse. So we can put a five amp fuse in there, look, somewhere in that part of the circuit. Five amp. And that's enough for one bulb. But what if we want to use two bulbs? Yeah. We need to use two bulbs, it's going to be twice the amperage. So rather than be three amp current flow, it's going to be six amps. Assuming the two bulbs are the same wattage, which they should be. All right, so we can put another bulb in here, in the circuit, and we can go down to there, look. So these bulbs are wired in parallel. That means that the current splits and goes to the, the two bulbs at the same time, whereas you could wire them in series, which wouldn't work, because each bulb would only be quite dull because the voltage gets split. So on cars, we always wire in parallel, normally, for bulbs, for headlights and stuff. Um, so now we've got current flow going through both the two bulbs when the relay is triggered. Okay, so we're going to need to increase the fuse up to the next size. Probably, if it was six amps, we could probably use a seven and a half amp fuse to be safe because. You want to try and keep it as close to your consumption as you can, but you've always got to have a little bit of spare. So we can get rid of the 5 amp fuse and we've got a 7.5 amp in there instead now. Now, you might ask me, well, hang on, dude. when this is wired up, the bulb is on all the time, so we'd need a switch. So they say on the dashboard of the car, you'd have a little switch for your spotlights on, spotlights off. And that switch would be in the trigger circuit. So we can wire the, wire the switch in here. I'll just use black for, just to make it stand out. So the switch, the manual switch that's done by the human, obviously if you get that red line now, we'll get rid of that. When you want the lights to be on, you'd, you'd turn the switch on, that would close that circuit and we'd get current going through the, through the winding. That would close the big switch inside the relay and power the bulbs. When you want the headlight, when you, yeah, we want to <laughs> turn it off, turn the switch off and it all powers down again. And the last thing we can do on here is, um, on a circuit diagram, we actually don't get to see that winding or this switch. It's actually inside the relay. So what we do to draw that on, on here is we just put a little dotted line around that area. Yeah? Like that. 
and that tells us that we don't actually get to see any of that. Yeah. That's that's actually all <laughs> hidden inside the black box. So the stuff you're meant to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's on the it's actually it's sort of that diagram on the relay there, look. Right, yeah. But um, to have a look inside a relay, just to show you what there is. I think there's one here that the cover comes off. So this is this is the inner workings of a relay. This is what it actually looks like. So you've got your coil of wire there, look. Mm. All right, that's this bit. So when a current flow goes through there, and you see how small the wires are? Yeah. So it's a tiny amount of current. When we put current through there, and we can actually energize that if you want. So it's going to be one and, and that one there, I think it is, which is two. So one and two. So if we get two wires, little ones, we'll bring our power supply across. This is actually quite cool, this bit. I like this. Stick it on there. I'm going to stick that on the positive for us. And we'll put one on there. And I've got that one. Right, if you want to turn it on for us. Now? Yep. Yeah, I won't die, don't worry. There we go. All right, so if I put, when I connect that, that terminal there, terminal one, on this particular relay, the different, different numbers, you'll see um, the switch will close. That's this bit here. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why it gets pulled across is because this winding creates a magnetic field yeah. and it pulls it across. Cool. Can you see that on the camera? So that is that, basically. Yeah. That is exactly that. That switch there on the diagram mm. is that switch there. And you can see how beefy it is. It's got big contacts on it. Mm. Yeah, down there, look. So there's your actual contacts. Mm. That's, that's the electromagnetic part. And the contacts are right down the bottom there. And that's all it's doing is it's just connecting those two contacts. Mm. That's all it really is. It's pretty cool. Right, yes, but turn the power off before I get to create fire. Right, so what we've done so far is a basic four pin relay circuit diagram for two spotlights. And we've included a switch on the trigger circuit and we've included two fuses. Pretty simple stuff. Um, should we do some stuff that's more interesting now? Sure. Make it do things. <laughs> okay, right. So that can go back in the box. Hi, Sam. So we did a really basic um, relay circuit, four pin relay, uh, a trigger circuit, that was the low current flow with the little manual switch in there and the two and a half amp fuse. And then we did the, uh, the consumer circuit, that's the side with the two spotlights, the two headlight bulbs that we, uh, that we superimposed on the diagram. And that circuit would have consumed around about six amps, so we use a seven and a half amp fuse in there. And it's the relay that switches that circuit because it has the big contacts inside the relay that can cope with that current flow. Right, next job is let's use, where is it now? Where's it gone? There we are, a flasher relay. Now this is a two-pin flasher relay. There is a video that I've done on wiring up various kinds of flasher relays. So I've just grabbed this one out of the drawer. It just happens to be a two-pin. Very simple to wire up. Basically, you just put it in circuit somewhere and providing the load is sufficient, then the bimetal strip will get hot enough and it'll break circuit, it'll cool down and then make circuit again. And uh, we should really pull it apart and have a look, but I don't want to break my relay. Okay, <laughs> right, let's start making another circuit. This is, there's no diagrams now, we're just doing it off the cuff. Right, ready Sam? Off the cuff, yes, we're following our nose. I have Haven't you? Off, it's a Yorkshire phrase again, see? Off the cuff. you would be using that now, won't you? Yeah. Off the cuff. We've got to wing it. That, that's, the, uh, that's the New Zealand way that we're going to wing it. But. Okay, right. I've got to stay at my bench. Okay, so, being a flasher relay, this one is designed to work with up to 20 amps. Now, on a car, or in this case, I think it's out of a motorcycle, not entirely sure, um, you've got indicator bulbs, uh, you've got one at the front, one at the side, and one at the back normally, haven't you? Yeah, so the front one and the back one are 21 watts each, and the side one is normally 5 watts. So 21 and 21 is 42, add 5 is 47 watts. How many 12s go into 47? Let's round it up, 48. So how many 12s go into 48? Okay. On the spot. Four. Brilliant. You see? That's very good. That's why Sam's here, because she's brilliant. Okay, so we've got a 12 volt system. And you know Ohm's law, right? So we've got a 12 volt system. We've got 48 watts. 12s into 48 tells us 
there's going to be four amps flowing through that circuit. That's such a good guess. Don't, don't spoil it! You, you, you were decisive, you worked that out. Well, I mean, you? I thought about it, so it wasn't a guess. Yeah, it's a 12, it's a guess, so and 12 is 24, and double it's 48, so there must be four of them. That's a rough guesstimate. <laughs> but it works for me. Good job. So we know we're going to have, on a car, four amps flowing around that circuit. And this thing can deal with up to 20 amps. That's a hell of a lot of... It's uh, a strong guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of indicator bulbs. Jeez. Input lead must be fused, obviously. Made in America. Look at that. Quality. America. America. Okay. Right, cheeseburgers. Okay, um, so the, it says here the circuit must be fused. We don't need to use a fuse because our power supply is internally protected. But if you're doing this yourself on a vehicle, of course it needs to be fused. Right, so we're going to make some flashing lights, Sam. Okay. So, battery positive onto one of the terminals on the relay, please. Here we go. Right, perfect. That's on there, is it? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do it again first? <laughs> Sorry. This is how you do it. <laughs> Clip. Lip. Bloody good. You see, you're, you're just a natural. So good at explaining. You know, in a few years' time, this will just be the tool girl Sam show. I won't even <laughs> need to. I can be on holiday around the world, all the YouTube profits, and you can be working hard making videos for me. Oh, yeah, totally. Perfect. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're going to use one of our vision destroying bulbs again. And the reason why we're going to use this, well, actually, let, let's work it out. Let's use a little bulb first and see what happens, okay? Right. Little bulb. These things are about 5 watts. Let's say it's 6 watts. How many 12s in 6? Oh, well, half. Half. <laughs> half. Half, Andy. Okay, so there's only going to be half an amp flowing through this bulb. All right, so let's see what happens. I'll plug it on there. I'll go onto the bulb. Why am I doing this? This is your job. Okay. <laughs> right, and we need one more lead wire. Use a little one. No, we need a long one, don't we? Here we go, look. Here's one I made early this morning. Whilst you were probably still in bed. Right. Okay, stick that in there. Now, they're not allowed to touch. This is the problem. These are not insulated ones, so we get, usually get sparks and things. Which is not good. I think we're going to be okay at that. And then that one, so I'm going to stick that on the negative side for us. Okay, so we've got a two-pin flasher relay. And this one, basically, you don't have to have a, uh, a trigger circuit. It's all built in. And all it has inside is what we call a bimetal strip. Now, a bimetal strip is two types of metal. And each type of metal has its own rate of expansion when it warms up. And what happens is it, when, it, when there's current flow through that bimetal strip, it bends like a banana. And the, and the contacts break. So then the current stops flowing. The metal bar cools down, touches again. Current starts to flow, the bulb lights up, gets hot, bends out of the way, breaks the circuit, the bulb goes out. So that, that's how uh, an old school mechanical flasher relay works. All right, so power on. Can you see it flashing? No. Yeah. And the reason why is the, the amount of current, that half an amp of current flow, is insufficient for that. To, to actually warm up the um, bimetal strip sufficiently to break circuit. So it's just... Oh, it's working! Huh. What have we done? Oh, we shot the out, that's why. There we go. Right. So can you see in there, look, Sam, that bulb is just mm. lit. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Just that's a fraction. You can't, you won't see it on the camera, but <laughs> the bulb is, is like really, really dull, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's, the current flow is not enough to heat up the bimetal strip sufficiently for it to bend out of the way, break circuit. So basically, we're using too small a bulb, and it is. This is you know you'd use one of these and a couple of 21 watts, not just a 5 watt on its own. And that's why sometimes on old cars, when you flash a bulb, stops working on one corner, the other one starts to flash really fast, mm. or sometimes it doesn't flash at all. You know, just your indicators just stop working. Okay, so power off before I get electrocuted. Right, there we go. So all we're going to do now, we're going to keep exactly the same circuit, but we're just going to change the bulb. And we're going to put a larger bulb in there. Now this is a 55 watt bulb. 
So how many amps are going to flow through that? How many? God, it was 48 was 4. Let's say, imagine this was a five. almost 5. You're right, because if it was 60 watts, it would be 5. Bang on, wouldn't mm. it? So it's just under 5 amps. And this thing can cope with a maximum 20. It didn't tell us what the minimum was, but we know the minimum yeah. is definitely above 0.5. Right, so we'll stick that on there. And then we'll turn it back on and see what happens. Right, Sam, hit the gas. I don't want to look at it this time. It's so bright. It's really bright, isn't it? It's really bright. So, so it's I, the indicator, basically. Yeah, that that is exactly what happened. <laughs> Yeah, what happens on your car. But obviously you have more than one bulb and they're all wired in parallel. Yeah, so the current flows through all the bulbs at the same time simultaneously. It doesn't go through one bulb to the next bulb to the next bulb. Okay, so we've now used a flasher relay. Okay, right. So, let's make something more interesting. Let's take the bulb out of the equation and let's use, it's a bit grubby, but we can use it, an injector. So this thing on the car, you know what this does, don't you? Injects the petrol into the engine. All right, so that sits on the cylinder head, and it has a permanent live feed, and the ECU has the switch in it, built in, like a relay. Mm -hmm. And the ECU will close the switch whenever it wants fuel to be sprayed into the engine. And it all happens really fast, so it closes the switch and then opens it again really quick. And basically when current flows through this, it opens a valve inside and petrol can spray out the back. And your petrol from your fuel tank, from the fuel pump, sits pressurised at this side. Okay, so hopefully I can do this without getting too many sparks. Right, do you want to turn it back on again for us? If you just put your finger on there, can you feel it inside? Just moving. That's the armature being pulled back. The armature gets pulled that way and it opens a valve at the bottom. But the viewers can't see that very well, can they? Oh shit, really short. Okay. <laughs> Terrible. That's why you, yeah, turn it for a second. <laughs> right. Safety's good. So I made a rig. And this rig has a slightly cleaner. Hmm. One of those, an injector on there, and and this is filled with brake cleaner, so it's very very flammable. So we could die if we make a spark. Really, we could. All right. So we need to just move things around a little bit. Okay. And um, let me just extend the leads a little bit because I want I really want to use some leads that have got some insulation on them because I don't want sparks occurring up here. That would be good bad. So we'll stick that one on there. So we're not changing the circuit, we're just making the leads a little bit safer. I'm using insulated leads. So we stick that. Um, come on, Sam, you can do this. You, to, you can be responsible for your own death. Um, if you want to stick that on that other pin down there, to make sure it's not touching the yellow one. That would be great. That would help immensely. Cool. Okay. It looks pretty good. So I'll pump it up and that creates a pressure in here and I'm going to press this down and that now has applied the pressure to the back of the injector. So when you turn that on this is going to start to actuate and it's hopefully going to spray brake cleaner out of there in exactly the same way the fuel will. You ready? My guess. <laughs> Go on then, it's only going to spray my toolbox and give it a clean, so we're all good. Oh, look at that. That's, that's fantastic. It's boring. Keep it going. Okay. So that's, that's what your fuel does when it sprays into the insect manifold. Now obviously it does it much, much quicker on a car, because the engine is you know, revving faster. But that's basically what's going on. I think we've done it's a not bit. good enough juice anymore. <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> gave up. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, okay. it's so high. <laughs> <sighs> right then. Have a good deep breath. Right. Okay, we are turned off, aren't we? Yeah. Good, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. 
so vain. Um, okay, so we've done a standard four pin relay, we've done a flasher relay with a ball, we've used the flasher relay to control uh, a fuel injector with a spray pan, which is pretty cool. Um, what we do have left to do, we can find the relay, Damn, where is it? There we are, look, is a double acting relay. Now, a double acting relay it basically has five pins, and on the consumer circuit, the You've got that switch inside the relay. Normally, when the relay is not actuated, the switch is open and nothing happens on the consumer circuit. But there's nothing to stop you having a five pin relay so that when the relay is not actuated, current flows out through a fifth pin. So, for example, you could have police flashing lights. That's how they do it, you see. Yeah, so you have one light comes on when the relay is actuated and then that turns off when the relay is not actuated, but the other one comes on, so you get this alternating lights going on. So we're going to use a five pin relay to create some sort of look-alike police lights, I reckon, should be cool. So the, uh, the double acting relay is this one here, and you're probably not going to see this, but that is the little tiny, oh, sorry Sam, little tiny wiring diagram on there, look. And the only difference is we now have an 87A terminal. So we've still got the standard um, consumer, so the consumer circuit, your 30 terminal, which is your power in, that would be fused from the battery, that's your, your main feed in. And when the relay is actuated, it'll give current uh, or voltage out on terminal 87. The trigger circuit is still 85 and 86. That's exactly the same as the first four pin relay that we did earlier on. Right, so we'll set this up first of all exactly the same way as the first relay that we did. And then we'll add the extra bit of the circuit just to keep it simple. You ready, Sam? You sure? Yeah. We survived the death defying bit, didn't we? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> the worst part. Yeah, flammable liquid all over the workshop with electrical components that are bare wires and sparks. Yeah, we're all good. Hookly duckly. Right, so we've got our magic five pin relay. And the trigger circuit is the one with the least amount of amps. So we can use little wires for that because we've only got so many wires here and we don't want to run out. So that can go battery positive. Is that the good one? My like hands not as good as feel like weak and shaky. That's not a bloody good girl. Right. Okay, so the trigger circuit I've marked with the two yellow tabs. One of these is 85 and one is 86. So you can go on to either of those two, it doesn't make any difference at all. Alright, that's just cool. Just so you know. 85. Hey, I just keep putting wires on until it works. <laughs> you know? I haven't got a clue what I'm doing really. Okay, and then we're going to go through the coil inside, a little winding inside, this bit here. And we're going to cut to the side and we're going to go to our flasher relay. Okay, so we're going to pop that in circuit. So again, either of those two terminals is fine. Okay, and then we're going to go from the flasher relay, we're going to go back down to ground. So you want that one there, and you want to go on to your earth of your battery. And we're going to test this circuit as we go through it. You know, we're not going to make the whole thing and then see what yeah. doesn't work. All right, so we turn on the power. In theory, the flasher relay should flash, it should break circuit every now and again, and we should hear this being energised and de-energised. But nothing's happening. Okay, turn it off. Needs another wire? Mm, no. <laughs> we oh, could chuck we could chuck another wire on it. Do you remember the problem we had with the um, where's it gone now? With the, with the small bulb mm. with the flasher relay. Remember it wasn't didn't draw enough amps to actually cause the bimetal strip. Yeah. To, 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 to bend out of the way. Well that's the same problem with the coil of wire in the relay on the on the trigger circuit. It doesn't draw enough amps to cause this re this flasher relay to actually actuate. So we're going to need to put something in the circuit that uses some more amps. So what we can do, and um, you could use anything, or you, if you were to do this on a police car, they wouldn't use an old school biometallic <laughs> strip. Um, relay, flasher relay, they'd use an electronic flasher relay. And they're not dependent on current, they work in a very different way. 
So, you're quite right, we need another wire. So we'll just put a, we're going to put a bulb in circuit and you've got to pretend that that bulb doesn't exist. All right, it's just to, to get this flash relay to work. So I'll pop that in there like that. And we'll stick that on there. And now, if you turn it on, the flash relay should work. The flash relay should work. It doesn't. Okay, turn it on. Right. Error number one. I'm an idiot. No, I'm not sure. Okay, alright, so. Right. We're still filming, I'll just stop it. We're still filming! All that, all that was filming, right, that didn't work, so we're gonna do this. Okay, we're gonna put the flasher relay and the bulb straight down to ground, so we'll get rid of that wire. That can go straight onto positive. And now if you turn it on, we know that that's going to work because we did it before. Perfect. Right. Okay. So we've got a permanent live here, because that's the battery positive, and we've got a switch live coming out of the relay, right? We need the switch live. So we'll pick, we'll, we're going to piggyback onto there with this clip. You can get in there. Move that one down a bit. There we go. Piggyback onto there, and then we're going to go onto the two of the trigger circuit. So one on there. And we need another wire, okay. So we'll stick that on there. Now this is a switched live. So we go on to the other terminal, which is 86 on there. And that needs to go to battery negative. That's a ground, all right. So can you stick that on ground for us? Onto there, can you get on there? Stick it over there, look, that'll work. Right, now. Now I can hear. That's cool. That was clicking before, wasn't it? Because the bulb was flashing. But this, this one, they feel that, though. That's definitely switching inside. Perfect. So what's happening now is we've got our 30 terminal here and we've got our two switched outputs. So this is always battery positive. This is the feed in, the big fuse. And then we've got one of these will be live and then it'll switch to the other one live and switch back to this one live. So now we can do another battery positive to here and then run a circuit of one bulb on each of these two and we should see those two bulbs alternate. Wow, so much fun. I, I love this stuff. <laughs> Alright, so we need big wire this time because it's going to carry lots of amps. We need battery positive on there. And we can do it all while it's, while it's running if we want. That's all good, as long as the cable doesn't catch fire. Right, so we'll stick that on there. That's our feed in, that's our, our main battery feed and that would have a fuse in it normally. But we're lazy so it's not going to have a fuse. Right. Now, circuit, Jesus, which one is, which one is 87, which one is 87A, can you read it? 87, yeah, 87A is the middle. That one? <laughs> yeah. 80, that's 87A. Yeah. Right, so we'll do 87 first, because we promised the viewers to wire it up as normal. So we'll go on to there. We need another bulb. All the way from England, these bulbs, I'll have you add. Stop, stop before I left. Right, so we're going to go onto there. Come on, Sam, you do this. Okay. So pop that onto there. Again. Yeah, probably it's all right. There's no flames, we're all good. <laughs> and we're going to need another heavy wire so you can go from the other terminal back down to ground. So battery negative again. Huh? How do you put three on them? I don't know. I don't know. Work it out. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. Lots of piggyback going on. Wow. Okay. So remember that bulb doesn't exist. We're just using that. Really yes, it is. To load up that one. Yeah, too bright. Really quick. Let's do the next one. Okay, now we need an alt alternating bulb, don't we? God, I'm going to run out of wires at this rate. Okay, so we've got one more pin left on the relay, which is 87A. Which is that one. I can see lots of spark about to happen here. Yeah, come back. I do that one that way, that'll work. Cool. Okay, this one we can do straight out. Onto there. God, we've got just enough wires. Just Look at that. Only just. Only just. Right, let's do that on there like, like that. And that needs to go to battery negative again. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Oh my god, that's like Christmas lights. Look at that. Very cool, eh? I, I get excited by this. Are you excited by this? I'm blinded. I'm blinded, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, right, so we can turn it off for a second. Whoa. Uh. Okay, so we used a flasher relay, an old school bimetal strip relay, in conjunction with a changeover five pin relay to create flashing alternating lights. This bulb, however, was only used because we had to because we did use the old school bimetal flasher relay and we had to have sufficient amperage going through that to trigger the bimetallic strip. So normally, under a normal installation, you'd yeah, use yeah. an electronic flasher relay and you wouldn't need that bulb. That was there just to get that relay to work. So these are the two bulbs that be on the vehicle. Flash, 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 alternating. Brilliant stuff. Enjoy that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Bit of fun. It wasn't rehearsed. It was just off the cuff. Straight in there, making some wiring circuits. And those bulbs, you know, we could have replaced them with fans. We could have replaced them with electric motors, they could have been anything we wanted to. As long as you're aware of the amperage draw and you choose the right size fuse, i.e. just a little bit higher, the next fuse up from what your current current draw is, you'll be all good. You have to fuse the circuits. If you don't, you're going to get sparks and you're going to get flames and things are not going to go very well at all. You often see cars at the side of the road burnt out. Pretty sure one or two of those are going to be down to the fact somebody fitted their own spotlights. Didn't put a fuse in it or a boombox, whatever it is, they have to be fused because if that wire chase through onto the body of the car, it's going to short the battery directly to earth. And batteries carry a hell of a lot of power these days. And that's heat. And it, you know, doesn't go well. Okay, swap sides, here we go. Right, we're going to do the end, do the sign off. Uh, you'll find, uh, no you won't, hang on, let's do this properly. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, if you enjoyed the video, then why not click on the subscribe button somewhere up there. Brilliant Sam, thank you. And you will see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon. <laughs> <laughs> Click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. They're really cool at doing that. Very helpful. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus, and Twitter. That was brilliant. We didn't rehearse that at all. Um, feel free to communicate through any of those portals, but first point of contact please through YouTube on the comments section because that's where the videos are and that's where people look at the comments. And it may be that your question has already been asked and I've already answered it. So scroll down, have a little read, see what you can find. If you can't find it, feel free, fire the question through. I can't promise I'll always get back to you. I am a real busy chap. I'm flying out to Sydney tomorrow, so I've got lots and lots going on. And I'm um, hoping to get some more videos edited tonight so you can watch some more while I'm gone. While I'm on holiday, not really on holiday, I'm working for Yamaha, but hey, Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> okay. Goodbye. See you Peace later, out. crew. What was that? Peace out. Peace? Is it like that? Peace out? Am I doing it right? Yeah. Peace out. Yeah? It's because we're hip. Because we're hip. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Hey, nice outfit, by the way. Thanks, I got it for a dollar. Yeah, I'm really cheap. Good. <laughs> really good. I just yeah. go to the thrift stores. I wish I could buy my shirts for a dollar each. Yeah, guys' yeah. clothing is actually really hard to find. Last shirt I bought was $79. Shit. <laughs> so I hence I don't buy shirts very often anymore. Yeah. Okay, group. It's been fun. See you next time. Over and out. <laughs>